Cat, it's Maximus here. This is a relatively straightforward video about making a custom built ratchet. This, in this case, it's gonna be a door, uh, an old, or I should say older quality Duralast 36 tooth flex head ratchet. That would have been one of these that I liked so much when Dur AutoZone came out with these, but now AutoZone's tools suck. And then there are these reports that they require a phone number and warranty registration, or they'll give you a hard time uh, swapping out tools, which is a disappointment. This ratchet head is actually from the Pittsburgh Pro. They have this double-ended ratchet that's quick release with the, it's like kind of like ratcheting, reversing ratcheting box wrench heads that have quarter inch and three-eighths drives, double-ended. I like this more for the long handle flex, low profile three-eighths, so I pulled the head off of that. And I'm gonna put it on this little Duralast handle. And so when you do this, you know, they generally have to, the head and the fork generally need to match up. If the head is way too narrow for the particular fork, you're stacking up too many washers and all the strain ends up on the screw and uh, it's highly likely to fail. Also, if this, ta uh, if this tang is just way too wide for the forks, uh, you're gonna have to grind too much of it down. Now, I had just, the previous video reviewed the ratchet, or excuse me, the Duralast 18 inch breaker bar, but it had a really pretty poor quality anvil, I'd even pull that out, but when I did, I saw it was pretty poor quality. Well, I noticed on the my vintage 3 8 uh, Duralast, uh, I believe these are great neck, uh, the quality seal head ratchet was really close. In this case, this tang was just a little bit too wide for the forks on this Duralast breaker bar. So all I had to do was grind about 30 thousandths of an inch. One thing you have to be careful of is that the forks will kind of come in when you put the screw tight and it'll pinch at the top. So I've always found that I need to over grind a little bit and get a washer in there just so it doesn't get bound up and I can have the, screw, the cross screw be really tight. And so in this case, I'm pretty satisfied because now I've custom built a Duralast, actually with the flex head, it's now a 19 inch, super ultra long handle ratchet. that also has a pretty strong head that I had 36 tooth head on it. So in that vein, oh, and by the way, when you're, if you do need to make washers for doing these types of projects where you really just need a washer that's a specific thickness, the easiest way to get a hold of various precisely uh, size washers is to actually get a Harbor Freight this feeler gauge set take it apart and then you'll just use the part with the hole you'll just like grind a couple notches fatigue it apart and use a pair of needle nose just to try to shape it in the grinder carefully or with a hand file until you've got a rel relatively circular object being a washer and then being feeler gauges they're going to be sized in thousandths of an inch so you can get just the right washer and after you do this, if it ends up breaking in some and you have the screw really tight and it isn't tight enough, all you have to do is just get the next size feeler gauge just a thousand thicker and swap out the washer and that's how you tension it. So it's a really nice way to uh, work on these kind of projects. There's inevitably some issues, such as on this Duralast here, the big issue is the forks were just, the hole was drilled really low and they were just these hugely long. And so all I had to do was just grind some of the end of the forks off just so that the head would actually fit in there. In this case, it's the same situation. If we put the head in here, we can see even all the way down, it just does not qu quite line up. And the same thing on the side. So what I'm gonna do, since this is not a particularly strong head, is I'm just gonna go ahead and just take a little bit off the end here and grind down the side some so that it will fit properly with this head. So this head's a little bit loose, but it's close enough. So what I'm gonna end up doing is one, using its, the spring that it comes with for uh, resistance so it doesn't flop around. And then I actually happen to have a washer that was just the right size that I'm gonna use on the other side just to uh, get it to have a nice fit. Okay, this will be a little noisy. I'm not gonna show you the whole process, but I'm just gonna show you a quick expert or egg, I don't know. A quick sample of the, tech, the hand technique that I'm using. I always use safety glasses. Uh, and the reason I'm using a small grinder, you have to use whatever grinder you have. I have a choice of an eight inch or this three inch, since this is a pretty small part. Uh, the eight inch wheels are actually pretty unwieldy and it's hard to get a good angle. On this three inch, it's a little bit safer to deal with. So uh, I'm gonna mainly be using this open wheel. We're doing custom grinding like this. I have a bit of experience grinding high speed steel tool bits is you'll want to just quick, just like welding, just quickly get an idea of the motions that you're going to go through 
and I'm going to come crossways when I do the side so that I don't get ripples. But just get a quick idea of the motions you're going to go through before you start grinding and then make sure that you are very aware of your, where your finger is going to end up. That's part of the reason you're doing this is just so you can make sure that your fingers aren't going to get too close and not, you're not going to get the part. I would use this side here with the, the plate, but it just doesn't offer enough wheel exposure for me to get a nice smooth motion. I'm trying to at least grind it so it isn't horrible. This will be noisy for a second. Here we go. So that's just a technique. As you can see, I'm at least maintaining some semblance of roundness on those uh, edges here. And if you see that you're getting lopsided, just work a little bit on the side that's high. I can see, actually it's just on this one that looks a little bit lopsided. I'll work on that. So it's a process of trial and error because you don't want to, you only want to grind as much metal as you have to. And then after you're done grinding, you know, you will want to just quickly touch up the edges because it will be pretty sharp. And also this wrench will heat up. You don't want to continue to grind it until it changes color because that indicates that you've gotten it hot enough to oxidize, which means that you've ruined the heat treatment. So you got to kind of go slow. Don't hesitate to dip this in the water. Just dry it off when you're done with it. And even though you're grinding off the chrome, obviously, the finish really isn't that bad on a grinder, especially if you do a ha uh, somewhat of a decent job. Here's our, how I've narrowed this down. And then the trial and error is just putting it together without any of the springs in it. And then just getting the screw in there, seeing if the screw will actually thread in the place. Whoop, that's too, here we go. It helps to have the right, the correct size uh, socket. So it kind of wants to thread in, but it just doesn't. And we can see that the head is still wanting to lock up. So I got to remove just a little bit more material. Now, of course, in this situation, you kind of have to evaluate um, when you find something that's close enough to work, really what can handle the most material removal. And to tell you the truth, I've removed quite a bit from this handle. So what I may do is remove just a little bit of material on each of these flats on the head, just to give it a little more clearance. And that way I'm kind of balancing it. Okay, that literally, uh, from the demonstration I showed you, only took a, literally uh, three to five more minutes of just touching it up, grinding, and then we just put it in the head and we see how it uh, comes together. We can, the screw goes in nicely now, and look, it threads. So we're just going to finger tight this, like so, and we're going to see how it flexes, and voila. I did remove a bit of material there, but I think there's still more than enough considering the strength of this head and uh, the fact that, you know, it's low profile and it's quarter inch. In other situations where it's this tight, I may not do that, maybe on a 3 8 because there's just so much more forces involved in a 3 8 that you would really be risking some type of failure. So now, really, we're at the finishing touch, which is simply installing these two washers or the washer and then the uh, spring. And that's usually pretty straightforward. You just pop them in there and assemble the ratchet and you're ready to go. Let me go ahead and do that. And here we are, the finished product. Yeah, I ground down this a little bit, but at least I'm actually pretty proud. I'm usually pretty bad at doing grinding work. 
I mounted this way so when you're looking at it, it doesn't just say Duralast because it's this uh, hobbled together of both Harbor Freight and uh, AutoZone parts. But now I truly have a low profile head quarter inch ratchet that I can use. It happens to be quick release, but it's fine. Uh, that I can use with these super low profile sockets. I have a special ratchet that these sockets sit into, so they're really low profile, but it's not a flex head. So in this situation, this would be my most compact flex head. In this instance, a 10 millimeter socket. And what makes it really compact, what I liked about it, was the fact that the switch itself is also very low profile. So it truly is something where all you have to do is just get it into this, this inch tall or one and a quarter inch tall space. Actually, it's much closer to the inch. The height of this right now from the top of the, the head to the bottom of the socket is actually one inch, one and one thirty seconds of an inch. So only 32 thousandths taller than an inch. So that's pretty neat. Is now this is a flex head ratchet that with a compact socket is only just a 32nd of an inch over one inch tall. Pretty handy. Definitely an under dash uh, master as far as flex heads go. And uh, there you go. And I even am pretty proud of the, how much material I removed because it stops just about 90 degrees in both directions. Maybe not quite 90 degrees there, but obviously that's fine. And uh, these are always kind of fun little projects that you can do with tools. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.